Well, something like this suddenly has us all desperate to know more about earthquakes. Joining us now, as you can see, Associate Professor Matt Goring teaches Earth and Environmental Studies at Montclair State University, New Jersey. Thanks for joining us. Matt, uh, we all know that earthquakes are the result of the Earth's tectonic plate shifting, but what causes them to do that suddenly? Well, we don't really know exactly, um, but the... Uh the short of it is that, you know, there's a little bit of slip on the fault lines and you get uh, energy that's transmitted as seismic waves through the earth. And that's what an earthquake is. Um, so doesn't happen very often in New Jersey. And uh, but this is a pretty big earthquake to happen in this area. Talk a little bit about that. Talk about how rare today's event was. It really was shocking for the vast majority of people from Philadelphia all the way up to Maine. We're just not used to this. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we usually we do get occasionally earthquakes of magnitude two, maybe a three, but 4.8 is something that uh, hasn't happened in probably 200 years or 100 years. And so this is definitely a rare event and we wouldn't be expecting to have magnitude five or 4.8 uh, magnitude earthquakes, you know, uh, on a regular basis. For, uh, professor, um, the questions I'm getting most from our viewers, uh, especially mm -hmm. with Taiwan and our recent memory, is this all interconnected? Is this more just a localized event here? Do we have to be worried about events like this being more frequent? No, this is, you know, these fault lines uh, here in this area are not connected to anything uh, related to Taiwan. That's a totally different uh, tectonic area. Um, these fault lines in New Jersey and New York uh, are essentially inactive old faults uh, from long ago, but they uh, sometimes slip a little bit and you get a little bit of an earthquake like we did this morning. You know, Professor, you know, anecdotally, we always hear about pets uh, reacting in advance to some of these things. But you know, is there any real way, has science really got to the point where we can predict when an earthquake is about to happen? Well, there's a lot of research on that, but no, we can only talk about statistics uh, based on past earthquake intervals. Uh, so the prediction is is not really uh, at the level of, let's say, a volcanic eruption. Uh, so, yeah, earthquakes are probably the hardest natural hazard for scientists to actually try to predict. I mean, it's almost impossible. So folks for folks like yourself, people who study situations like we had today. What is it that you're going to be looking at coming from today's event and what are you hoping to learn from it? Well, one of the things is that, that it can happen. I mean, that's one thing. I mean, it's not unre unrealistic to believe that we'll never have any earthquakes. And so one of the takeaways is that we should be prepared to have uh, at least a magnitude 4.8 earthquake. And we might not have it very often, but we do have to build our buildings and prepare uh, buildings and other structures that can withstand at least a 5.0 magnitude earthquake. Well, Matt, thank you so much. A lot of really interesting stuff brought up in that discussion. Uh, Associate Professor Matt Goring from Montclair State University. Again, thanks for joining us. And we invite you at home to stay with Eyewitness News as our coverage continues on this earthquake.